So I wanted to deliver you a little tutorial about these <clears throat> lace pico loops that I'm putting along the edge of this embroidered collar that I've made. Now, I could do them in a traditional lace making technique, which is where I would throw a stitch and cover it with buttonhole stitches and put my little uh, French knot pico at the top. But I found that to be very slow and cumbersome and kind of difficult to get even or small enough. So what I have is I have one thread here, which is my foundation thread, and then I have the working thread, which is the needle. And what I'll do is I'm beginning by, what I'll do is I'm taking the needle around this thread and out through the loop. So I'm creating a little half hitch. And I can pull this tight and I can get really consistent tension this way and it goes really fast. So here I have one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm going to go in here and do my pico. So my pico is kind of a bullion knot pico. So uh, I will, I've got my, needle coming up through the last stitch. One, two, three, four, five wraps. And then I hold, I hold the little pico in between my fingers as I pull the thread through and that keeps it nice and tight. And then I'll take one more stitch through the same stitch where I actually made the pico. And then I will make the remainder six stitches, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, unlike tatting, this is just buttonhole stitches along the foundation thread. If this were tatting, this thread would then, like I would make the stitch, but then tatting flips it. So then I would pull the needle thread tight and allow the twist to flip to the other side. But that's not what we're doing in this process because we don't want to use a 19th century tatting technique to create a 16th or 17th century garment. So what I end up having, though, is something that is structurally identical to what would be used in the time period. Um, and that way it's indistinguishable from lace that's made in the traditional way. Now what I've got here is I've got my little set of stitches along this foundation thread, and then I'm going to to secure it into the buttonhole stitches that I have along the edge of the collar. And so I'll do that there. And then I will start the next batch. One, two, three, four, five, six stitches. Come up through the last stitch wrap one, two, three, four, five times, grip it between my thumb and middle finger, pull the thread through, take a second stitch into the stitch where it's being made, and then make six more. Oops. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now I'm making sure to hold this thread very tight so that there's no possibility that the stitch will flip because that creates um, the wrong kind of knot for what I'm trying to do. And again, one, two, three, four, five, six, Make the pico. One, two, three, four, five. Now I like this little nubbly bullion pico at the top. It is a little bit more coarse, I think, than a pico from the actual time period. I think a pico in the time period would be maybe three wraps total. So you wouldn't have quite such a little round ball on the end. It would be more like a little straight nub. Two, three, 
four, five, six. And I will secure in place. There you go.